Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is February the 9th, 2017. Just coming on here with a couple of things that the Lord has led me to share openly. Uh, this I received an audible word, actually, about um, two nights ago. And I was doing some research on it um, until the Lord prompted me to come forward with it. And so that time has come, and I just want to start, first of all, um, going into prayer. Glory be to Father God, creator of heaven and earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, like I said, there's a couple of things that I need to uh, go over. Um, I prayed before I came on, and I just asked the Holy Spirit to guide me, for me to not lean on my own understanding on what He wants me to speak so again, I'm going to plead with the Holy Spirit to um, fill my words with love and understanding of what He wants us uh, to take a look upon as far as um, one of the subjects being Elijah. Okay, so I'm just going to go through my notes here. Um, again, two nights ago, I did receive a word from the Lord. It was an audible word. Um, I had been in prayer throughout the day, going on and on and bended knee. And the audible word that I received from the Lord uh, regarding Elijah is, um, let me just uh, look for it here. Sorry. Um, okay, I need to go down a little bit. In fact, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it the way he, he instructed me to do this. So I'm just going to start with um, first uh, pleading with our brothers and sisters in Christ, um, whether you're viewers or whether you are a um, member of the, of the body of Christ um, within the um, watchman wall. Uh, I, I am pleading with you on behalf of the Lord that we take a look at, um, at our hearts, but that we don't get too focused on our hearts as you're going to see the Lord gave me scripture regarding just how um, we um, can, um, depending on the on the heart alone, uh, can mislead us. And um, I'll explain because um, that's one of the verses that the Lord gave to me. I pray, brothers and sisters, that each of you are tentatively uh, daily examining your hearts and surrendering anything unpleasing to the Lord. Um, I have certainly made a regimen of this um, because throughout the day as we're going on here, you know, we'll see things and, you know, it's just it's just hard at this point in time. I'll leave it at that. Um, the Holy Spirit does not want me to reflect on that and I'm going to remain obedient. Okay, so um, the first verse that he gave to me was in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. And if you'll please pay attention to detail, this is very important. This is what the Lord wants us to focus on at this particular moment. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? He then pointed out to me, thus seek the Lord in all you do. In other words, don't just seek your heart, of course. It's good to have a heart to heart. But ultimately, seek the Lord in all you do. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, that's a combination of three scriptures. Um, so again, the first part was in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. Uh, at this some point in time also, um, I want to pray for the Holy Land as uh, it's being reported that missiles have been thwarted for now. And um, we know, of course, from prophecies that the Lord has spoken through us, um, through various of his servants, that Israel will be surrounded uh, by her enemy. Um, let me just uh, go down here a little bit um, to get the full uh, word today. Give me just one moment. Sorry, guys. Okay, so now the word of um, the word from the Lord on Elijah. A couple of nights ago, and it might even be three, um, I went to the Lord in prayer at night, and I had asked him about Elijah because I had remembered reading something in the Bible, and it didn't quite um, it didn't quite make sense to me. So um, he was directing me to go to the Bible for answers. Um, especially after he gave me the audible word. And the audible word that the Lord gave to me as I was in prayer about Elijah 
Um, please understand that when I went to him in prayer about Elijah, I was just literally out of curiosity. I was asking him, what should we look for? You know, it's been announced that Elijah is here. So what should we look for? And it was interesting because he, the word that he spoke to me was Elijah is a juror in the court's palace. Again, this is what the Lord gave to me. Elijah is a juror in the court's palace. At that point in time, he gave me a vision and he showed me a young man. He was dressed in, he was a younger man. I, would, I couldn't even guess on his age, to be honest with you, because he was young and then he, he, I received understanding that he was a little bit older. So I'm not sure exactly about that. Um, anyhow, um, obviously he wants me to mention that. So, um, he wore a, uh, like the skirts, like the warrior skirt skirts that they used back in the day. Um, I'm just giving you a, a visual for the vision that he gave me. Anyhow, um, he, that led me to scripture, full on scripture about Elijah. And the last two days I've been spending it in research um, about what we should expect regarding Elijah. And I think that you will find it very interesting what the scripture tells us, what the actual word tells us about Elijah. I'm going to give you a little bit of profile about Elijah. I'm going to go through that because the Lord wants you to know about him um, and what he did in his time and um, his profound uh, role in, in um, I guess, prophecy. So... Elijah was completely committed unto God. He preached righteousness boldly. His main role in end times, it is written to restore the hearts of fathers to their children and children's hearts to their fathers before the great day of the Lord. Now, are we talking one person? Are we looking for one person who's going to have the ability to turn all um, father's hearts towards their children and children, children's hearts towards their uh, fathers. It was interesting because the Lord gave me understanding that like um, he was asking me a question during my research and he was saying, is that possible? Or is this a Holy Spirit, a collective movement by the church? <clears throat> Excuse me. So those questions, uh, they're interesting to say the least, and I surely don't have the answers for everything, um, and I don't proclaim to be ever, but I certainly, when I'm told to, to research the, the word, I certainly do. So these are maybe some questions that we can all maybe share some views on. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 11, 13, 11 through 13, it reads, and please, again, pay attention to detail because this is where he's zeroing in on. Jesus answered and said to them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has come already. And they did not know him, but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the Son of Man is also about to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the Baptist. John the Baptist received the anointing of Elijah. So again, I'm going to read that carefully again. Jesus answered and said to them, Indeed, Elijah is coming first and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has come already. And they do not, did not know him, but did to him whatever they wished. Likewise, the Son of Man is also about to suffer at their hands. So the Lord is telling us that Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, <clears throat> through John the Baptist, had already come. Does this mean he comes again? It, does it mean that he specifically comes back? Or the spirit of Elijah actually transforms the hearts of fathers to children and children to fathers? That's what he's wanting me to point out. In chapter uh, 1, Kings... Uh, verse 19 it looks like or chapter 19 excuse me it talks about how elijah escaped jezebel this is really important to give you an idea of what elijah went through um just before he sort not turned but uh how can i say fell away let's just put it that way 
However, when faced with the threat of Jezebel and the obvious fact that there would be no immediate revival in the land, he suddenly became fearful and discouraged. Listen to that. The obvious fact that there would be no immediate revival in the land, he suddenly became fearful and discouraged. I don't know, but to me it seems like the spirit of Elijah is the revival that we will all take a part in. If Jezebel had really wanted him dead, she would have tried to seize him without warning. But cunning as she was, she wanted to rather discredit him before his new converts, and she was successful. In chapter 19, verse 4 through 10, the Lord restores Elijah. But the Lord wasn't through with Elijah, and failure doesn't mean defeat or an end to our ministry. By the way, this is meant to touch the hearts of anybody who has fallen astray. Please pay attention to this part. That is what the Holy Spirit is asking me to speak to the church. This is also one of the encouraging elements of this chapter. Before God used Elijah, however, there were some things Elijah had to learn. Elijah's failure and discouragement because of his expectations were due in part to two things. First, there was his view of what it would take to change the nation. His God-given successes had made him take his own importance too seriously. Furthermore, he thought the primary means of reaching the people was the display of God's power in dramatic and spectacular ways. He thought if they didn't respond to that, there was no hope. So when he failed to see the results he expected, he was shattered. Oh, how we often set ourselves up for discouragement by our pride and our expectations, which we fail to rest on the foundation of God's wisdom. Elijah's response, excuse me, Elijah's response is indicated in verse 10. His answer shows us he had not grasped the issues. He was still smarting over his failure as expressed in verse 4. Sorry, guys. He was, he was filled with his own importance and angry over the lack of response and help from others, including the Lord. He was somewhat bitter because he had served the Lord so earnestly and spectacularly, and still he had experienced only rejection and exile. Jeremiah had a similar experience. The Lord certainly wants us to stay encouraged, whether you've fallen astray or... <clears throat> Due to the hearts of man, you have become subject um, to not only alienation, but misunderstanding. This is what the Lord is expressing through the Holy Spirit to the church. For those who have ears to hear, if you are experiencing any of these things in any measure, in any way, please, Please take to the Lord while we can in prayer. Ask the Lord to remove anything unpleasing from our hearts and anything unpleasing from our spirit. Deliver it up to Him. Deliver it up to Him. We must trust in the Lord and the Lord only. And we certainly must not seek on our own understanding. Again, this is what the Lord wanted me to um to bring up today in this research, in this assignment, regarding Elijah. As you probably already know, many are looking for a one-person Elijah. Perhaps it's not one person. And I'm not saying that it is. Please do not misquote me. I'm reading from the Word, and the Word says specifically that Elijah already came. However, it also says that the end time role of Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, is to bring father and children together a universal revival. I th Sorry, guys. I believe that, of course, a spiritual revival like never before um, is on the horizon 
And I just want to remind you all, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, saints, I love you so very much. I love you so very much. God bless you.